We are at Tourist, and today we are talking about the new book, Food and Beer. Thank you both so much for being here with me. You're welcome. Thank so, first of all, I think for a lot of people, when they think of pairing food, they don't often think of beer. But as better beers have become more and more available, especially in the U.S., how have you found the response to people when they're thinking about pairing food and beer? More and more people are doing it now. Um, no one is doing it to the extent that we are. But uh, it's definitely something that, you know, sparks some interest to a lot of people because, mm -hmm. you know, doing it at, at the level that we do it is, is new and, you know, people are very adventurous when it comes to beer these days. Right, and I think that that's an important piece of it. When you speak about the level that you're doing it at, I mean, obviously this isn't like, you know, it, there's a certain quality of beer that is required when you're thinking about pairing. So how do people mm -hmm. begin when they're even sort of approaching pairing beer with food? Yeah, well, I mean, the other the other point is that like we don't have any wine here in the whole building. Mm -hmm. So we, when people walk in, if they're thinking about wine, we can you know steer them in a direction. And and you know, it, it's all about opening people up to how many different styles of beer there are, and you right. know how, how many interesting things are going on. Right. And obviously, in a restaurant, there's you have access to better products. You have access to your kitchen, to your suppliers. You know, a book is such a different beast in that way because you're saying to people, okay, you have to find these items on your own. How is that to sort of make your approach more approachable basically for the consumers? I mean the beer part of it is getting easier and easier because mm -hmm. beer is such a big deal right now. Uh, there's 4,000 craft breweries more than ever in the history of, of craft beer and uh, you know it's so easy uh, available everywhere so you know as Daniel said before this is obviously about the restaurant and the pairing and everything, but it's also about educating people because we do get a lot of people in that, you know, come in and say, I don't like beer. Mm -hmm. And I always, you know, say that we can always find something you like. We haven't been uh, too specific about, you know, you have to do exactly this beer because, you know, if that right. one is sold out, you can't get it. So that's why we, we divided the book up into flavors because, you know, you can talk about sour and the, 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 the amount of sour beers on the market now is so big. and. Yeah, my, some sours might work better than other sours, but you know, at least you know a direction you can go in. Right, and I think for a lot of people, they are nervous about the sort of lack of hand-holding where they say, oh, well, just tell me exactly what beer. But are you finding that it's changing so much that you know you didn't necessarily want to put into the text, like, buy this beer to pair with this exact thing? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you don't want to discourage people who's like, oh, mm -hmm. I can't find that beer. It's gonna, you know, right. everything's gonna be horrible. Mm -hmm. it, it's, um, you know, as I say, encouraging people to try new things. There are some basic tenets in the book, so maybe if you can explain kind of what items pair well with different types of beer. You know, you mentioned sour beer. You know, what types of food would people approach when they're looking at that type of beer and other types of beer? I mean, there's, there are different rules, like uh, rules of thumb you can use when mm -hmm. pairing uh, beer and food. And, you know, it's just it's just a, a rule, so it's not, you know, it's not like it's yeah. the only thing. It's Any not rule like can always, be broken. But, exactly. yeah. but, you know, you can talk about, and we talk about that in the book also, there's the, the con contrast or mm -hmm. the complementary pairing. So mm -hmm. you can find something that complements the dish, or you can find something that contrasts the dish. Mm -hmm. and, you know, a good example is always the, the chocolate cake or the brownie. Mm. The most obvious thing would to, would be to pair it with a big imperial stout with chocolate flavors and coffee flavors. And it works really well. Mm. But you can also do the opposite and say you get tart, raspberry beer, uh, mm. because, you know, that that's a con contrast pairing and that works also. So, you know, it's there's a lot of examples and, you know, we talk about those examples. Uh, and again, it's not like we say you can only do this, you can only do that. But if you have a tart beer, you know, what food matches that. If you have food with some tartness in it or some everything they say, that's what kind of beer style should you go after? That's that's how we did it. Are there any particular pairings from the book that you were really surprised by that you thought worked well? There's one that uh, I think does work very well. The It's a smoked pilsner that mm. goes with um, Abelskiver, which are mm. Danish, um, sort of like a pancake batter that you make in a, in a special pan. Uh, and normally sweet, but uh, this time we did it a savory and mm. uh, served it with a smoked uh, a roasted hay gribiche. Mm. One that I that I think works really well was the Daniel's flank steak salad, which is like such a mix of flavors, but it also has some tartness in it. I think we used some vinegar, some mm -hmm. salt, and we paired it with alembic, which is kind of a tart beer. And I think that you know it brings out the flavors more, the tartness. So it's it's really cool. Um, and one thing to say about about beer also, uh, which I think is important and which we also talk about a lot in the mm. in the book, is uh, that in 
beer making, if you compare it to wine, mm-hmm. there are no rules. Um, he talked about a smoked right. pilsner, meaning, you know, the pilsner, we all know what a pilsner is, that's mm-hmm. like a Budweiser, but you can add a little bit of smoke malt and you get a smoked pilsner and it, you know, you can you can use that with something totally different. Right. And the fact that there are no rules in, in, uh, in beer making, uh, you know, makes it, the flavor spectrum so wide. If we want to add olive and strawberry, which I have done, mm-hmm. I can add olive and strawberry. You can't do that in wine. No, I think one of the things that's most interesting about this book is, you know, for so many people, and you probably also see this in the restaurant, is that they, you know, people come in with a preconception of what beer is. And actually one of the big takeaways from the book is that you know, if you've only had a certain slice of beers, you're not even really, it would be like having, you know, one bad Pinot Grigio in your life and saying, yeah, I know I about agree. wine. So it's is like, it important to you to kind of showcase, like there is such a thing as a smoked pilsner. There is such a thing as yeah. fruit beers. There is, you know, all of these different types of beers. Yeah, 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 the spectrum is not Miller Miller Lite to <laughs> right. Guinness, you know, like this. And then like Blue Moon yeah. as your craziest yeah. option. I mean, as, as I said earlier, we do, you know, one of the goals with the book, with this place, is also to educate people. And I love to, to have people come in and say, I don't like beer because, you know, mm. That's a, that's a cool challenge to get because you have to find something they can like and I don't think we have failed on that yet. Yeah, I mean, yeah. What type of beers do people typically like if they don't like typical beers? Fruit beers are always a good start because everybody likes fruit. And I also think like the, the sour ales aged in oak barrels and stuff. Mm. It, you know, it tastes very similar to natural wine, uh, right. which is it also can be a good introduction for people who, oh, you know, I, I like wine, but I'm not sure about beer. Well, this is a good start. Thank you, Thank you. so much for having me here at Taurus, and the book is Food and Beer. You should pick it up if you want to learn more. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.